What could you tell me about um, St. Louise's friendships? St. Louise's early life, without going into all of that, was a period where she was what we would probably call today disconnected. She was placed in a convent as a very young child because she didn't have any place in her, the fa her father's home after his remarriage. She also uh, was then, she was happy there. She uh, had an aunt in this Dominican convent, but she didn't have any lasting ties. Then she um, was taken from this convent and placed uh, in a more domestic learning situation, which was also a rejection on the part of her family. Then she wanted to enter the cloister, and uh, the superior of the captions was prophetic, but to the young Louise it wasn't prophetic when he said, no, God has other designs on you. And that was hard. That was a rejection. But what was she going to do? At that time, there was a choice, especially from the class in which she was. You became a religious or you married. There was no middle ground. And what happens is it's an arranged marriage. But it turns out to be a marriage where love grew, and it especially grew after the birth of her child, Michelle. And Louise, for the first time, has some actual ties, some actual human bonds. And she um, flourishes in that situation. And she makes friends in her social circle. And she shows some of the leadership abilities by organizing these women to also go out and serve the poor. So she forms some bonds there. But probably the most significant friendship in Louise de Marriac's life was her friendship with Vincent de Paul. And it didn't seem like it was going to work in the beginning because they couldn't be more different. And they were both pretty reluctant. Vincent had had spiritual directees that had demanded a lot of his time and energy, but now he was founding the Congregation of the Mission, busy about doing all those works, and along comes a widow because Louise had lost her husband. And he wasn't thrilled about it. But he agreed to do it, and little by little, they went forward together. Sometimes there's a terrible image of Louise de Marillac as this sort of marionette, and Vincent is master puppeteer, and that it all worked out wonderfully, but that couldn't be farther from the truth. There was a mutuality in this friendship. It's one that they talk about others, uh, charismatic friendships, and seldom do they talk about Louise and Vincent. And yet they, they were, they were close, they grew together. This is just me, but I see Vincent as a man of action that Louise drew into prayer, and Louise as the contemplative that Vincent drew out of herself into uh, the active uh, religious that she would become. And so you have them, and they grow together. It's really a very touching kind of thing, and you don't, there's a wonderful quote of Vincent's uh, that he writes in early March of 1660. And he says to, to uh, an, another friend of both Louise and Vincent, Mathurin and Guerin, and he says to her, the great secret of the spiritual life is that little by little, because they had grown old together, God takes from us all that we love so we may abandon ourselves to all that he wills. 
pray for me. And by that time, the bond was very close. But there were other close friendships in Louise's life. The ladies of charity with whom she worked. She's very close to some of them. These sisters whom she formed and who became her sisters in community, but also became her friends. And her letters are wonderful because Vincent wrote to the entire world. And so you go through 14 volumes to all. But Louise's letters are much more concentrated. With Louise's letters, you, you see the, the bonds that have developed between her and the sisters. Uh, many years ago, when I was at Niagara University and was translating Louise's letters, the um, students in the foreign language department, the student aides, typed them. And one day I came back from class and there was a student who had, was typing. And when I went, this student was a 22 year old from Brooklyn, an out of wedlock expectant mother who at that age had seen it all and was impressed by nothing. And I came in and she said, sister, you know what? I said, what? She said, this is pointing to the manuscript. This is one cool lady. And coming from her, that was eulogy. I said, Heather, why do you think so? And she said, well, and you have to remember that she was reading these letters in chronological order without a broad context. And she said, she is the most caring person I have ever met. She said, she writes to the sisters, and she's not just interested in what they do, though she wants them to do it very well. She's interested in them. She doesn't just push them to become holy, that, that's what she wants, but she cares about the steps in their journey. And she said, how in the world does a woman like that, with all she has to do, find time to not only visit their families, but to write to the sisters and tell them about them. That's a cool lady. And that's probably um, the Louise de Marriac that I would say before she died, um, that the, her thanking God for all the people who had come into her life and led her to God.